Now, we are in our Living Free series. This is actually the third week, pretty amazing. David came up in the first week and kind of set the table and said, listen, this is where we're going over the next four or five weeks and, and, and be prepared for this. And he led us in wonderfully. And then last week was Easter, man. How awesome is Easter? So love having uh, so many people here in Easter, three services. It was absolutely great. And we talked about uh, that, that first step, right? That, that first step in live, living free is accepting Jesus. It's accepting Jesus Christ. And this week we're coming to that second step, that second step. And really, there's multiple steps that we need to take, and sometimes they're not chronological, but we put them in, in some order so that we can kind of recognize what they are. And so this week, this week, we're talking about what's that second step after you accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And so to do that, I'd love for you to open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6. We're also going to be in Romans chapter 8, but also, and I know you can do this, this is challenging, right? I want to have your finger in one place in your Bible, in Romans chapter 6, then I want you to flip back to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. We'll get there in a moment. Okay, so Romans chapter 6, Mark chapter 8. Now, while you're doing that, while you're doing that, I want to kind of illustrate what we're talking about today by talking about some movies. Because I know you guys, if you're like me, you're movie buffs. You enjoy movies. I mean, I really like watching movies much more than watching the news today, right? My goodness. Anyways, movies. Back to that. Don't get me on, don't get, don't get me on current events, right? So movies, anybody remember the movie The Matrix? Yeah, 99, 2000, something like that. Man, this is one of the few movies that I went back and actually watched a couple of different times, right? Because it just had so many streams of, of beating. But anyways, if you haven't seen the movie, and I'm, raise your hand if you've seen it. Okay, let me, let's get there. Most everyone. Okay, that's good because I'm going to butcher this. But anyways, what happens is there becomes a, a, a war between man and machine, right? Between man and machine. It's going back and forth and the machines take energy. So man said, hey, I'm going to cut the energy. So he cut the energy. And then they started using solar power. And they said, okay, we're going to darken the sky. So they somehow darkened the sky, shot a missile up, did something, uh, trying to, again, stop the machines. Well, the machines figured out, because they couldn't use solar energy, you know what? The human beings can actually become a battery for us. And so they started plugging into our, our minds. But they found out if they plugged into our minds and didn't give our minds something to do, we would die, and that didn't help them at all. And so they plugged into their mind, and they created this thing called the Matrix. And so we lived in this imaginary cage, this imaginary world. And so it kept our minds going and kept the machines fed with energy. That's basically the plot. But in the movie, Neo, the one comes, right? And, and he defeats the, the one who had authority. Uh, what, what was his name? Mr. Smith, right? Kind of deal. Matter of fact, I was watching uh, Lord of the Rings this weekend. And, and of course, he plays a different character in that. And so he comes on screen and I lean over to my wife and go, Mr. Anderson, <laughs> right? Just because every time I see him, I see the Matrix. I see Mr. Smith. But anyways, but anyways, I digress. So anyways, he defeats this guy, this, like, the representation of power, of evil in the matrix. He dies, he comes back to life, and he defeats him in that moment. And at the very end of the movie, it's so interesting, at the very end of the movie, you, you just hear this phone ringing, right? It's buzzing, ringing. And for those of you who don't know what it is, there is a payphone there, right? And he picks up the payphone and he starts to talk to the machine. And basically what you realize in that, mo that moment is the war is over. Neo has defeated the machines. The war is over, but, but there's still battles to be fought. The war is over, but there's still battles to be fought. Now, how does, that, how does that have anything to do with what we're talking about today? Listen, Jesus Christ on the cross, and as he got up from the dead, he won the war. He won the war. Just as Neo defeated, defeated the machines, he won the war. But there's still battles to be fought. Jesus has won the war, but there's still battles to be fought in our lives. Vicious battles, vicious battles. We need to know because sometimes we come to Christ and we think, oh, if I come to Christ, it's just going to be easy. It's just going to be easy. And then all of a sudden we realize it ain't easy. At least not all the time. Another great movie, The Shawshank Redemption. Who's seen that one? All right, all right. Great movie. I love this character right here. So this gentleman has been incarcerated most of his life, been locked up in prison. All he knows is the prison life. Finally, his day of parole comes, and he, he walks out into the street. He takes the bus. He's walking around in, these, uh, in the city, and he doesn't know how to handle his freedom. 
He doesn't know what it means to be free. There's challenges. There's differences. He can't handle it. And sadly, sadly, this gentleman hangs himself. Hangs himself. Guys, sometimes we get locked up, right? Another way of describing this. Sometimes we've, we've been captive by sin, captive by death, captive by challenges, captive by problems. And, other, and then all of a sudden, we become free. Jesus has set us free. But as we begin to walk around in the world with this new freedom, we don't know how to act. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to respond. And all of a sudden, we just can't move forward anymore. And although he, although he hung himself, we spiritually strangle ourselves. It's so very challenging. And so today, we need to talk about this second step. After you come to Jesus, then what? Then what? Because listen, we need to know, we need to realize there's battles to be fought. We need to realize that life is going to be different. It is going to be challenging so that we don't strangle ourselves, so that we don't have such a, a hard time and we, you know, we don't get in a situation where we don't expect these things. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to begin to talk about that today. So here's a key statement. Here's a key statement. Does that resonate with you? All that movie stuff, all this kind of stuff, does that, does that resonate with you? Man, I signed up for the Jesus team, and sometimes pastors, and I'm guilty of this, they make it sound like it's just going to be easy. And then you get into real life, and it ain't easy. Does that resonate? Because over the next couple of weeks, we're really going to talk, we're going to be real and gritty. And I want to make sure that I'm resonating with you, because this stuff is going to help change your life, okay, for the better for the better key statement we are free make no mistake we are free but fighting our battles as free men and women can be difficult it can be difficult the understatement but this realization this realization of those battles and these challenges is our first and perhaps earliest steps in spiritual warfare and like gi joe used to say knowing is half the battle Anyone? I'm with you. <laughs> this is a big part of what it means, listen to me, to passionately follow Christ. You've got to be in the battle. You've got to be in the battle. If you're passionately following Christ, you will be in the thick of the battle. Satan won't leave you alone. Temptation won't leave you alone. You'll be in the thick of the battle. You'll feel it. You'll know it when you passionately follow Christ. So I'm going to kind of show my hand here early, and I'm going to talk to you about what we need to do, and then I'm going to walk through some scriptures and show you what we need to do, okay? So the first thing that we need to realize is to passionately follow Christ, to, to engage in spiritual warfare. Mm. Wow. You must die to yourself. Like, if, if that was weight on a squat bar, bar it would be like a thousand pounds. It's, it's so heavy that statement there's a phrase I wanted to save it to a later series that we're going to do in a couple months but I'm going to use it now it's just a way to remember this and it's so, it's so powerful it's the I must die the I must die in your life you have to die to yourself if you want any hope in winning the spiritual battle if you have any hope in winning these spiritual battles you have to die yourself jesus talks about this in mark chapter 8 this is why i had you turn there quickly we just want to touch on this okay it's not our core, core text so what jesus says in calling the crowd to him to himself that's jesus with his disciples he said to them if anyone would come after me if anyone would follow him follow his teaching follow his way have him as lord and savior let him deny himself okay well that just doesn't sound too pleasant deny himself but okay deny himself but now hear this, and take up his cross. Oh, oh. Boy, that sounds a lot like dying. So deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Do you hear what's happening? Listen, you need to deny yourself, take up your cross, die to yourself and follow me. And in other places, it, it says do this daily. Do this daily. And then 35 just makes it so super clear. It says this, verse 35. For whoever would save his life will lose it. 
But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. We must die to ourselves. This is a paradigm shift that we must come back to daily, laying ourselves on the table daily, on the altar daily, dying to self. You, you want to have victory in the battles? First thing you do, die daily. Die daily. What a paradigm shift. But Paul also speaks of an application off of this challenge. And again, we're going to get more into this part, more into this part in some of the spiritual warfare in about two weeks from now. 1 Corinthians 9, 27 speaking about being disciplined in these things, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. I myself should be disqualified. Paul says you've got to be disciplined. Disciplined daily. Deny yourself. To do certain things to help you to deny yourself. And we're going to talk about all of that with hope with hope in the truth of Jesus that there's no condemnation, which is what's going to be seen in our core text today. You guys with me? All right, here we go. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. That was just, that was just, that was like appetizers, right? That was just appetizers, okay? Romans chapter 6, and I'm going to be reading 12 through 14, and then we're going to jump over to Romans 8, 1 through 2. So here we go, here we go. Romans 6, 12 through 14. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who've been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instru instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you're not under law, but under grace. Praise God for that. And then Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 2, you can just flip your page over. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life, life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. I'm going to say that again just as encouragement because throughout the midst of this service, this sermon, you may, you may get a little, a little sad, a little down. But I want you to hear that again. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. God, here is your word. Let us teach us. Jesus, how I need to hear this. Jesus, how I have been hearing this all week, Lord. How you have just um, um, struck me, cut me to the heart with this, Lord Jesus, because I need this. I need this truth in my life. I need to be reminded of this truth, Father, about what it means to die daily, what it means to live a disciplined life, Father, and this thing we called spiritual warfare, this first steps into that after we accept Jesus, Lord, to engage in spiritual warfare and have victory. Holy Spirit, speak through this broken vessel. Who needs Romans 8? Who needs Romans 8? And that there's no condemnation. But God also who needs Romans 6, Lord Jesus, that confirms what I should be doing. Father God, encourage us, convict us, Lord Jesus, and give us the strength, Father God, to walk out of here, Lord, as spiritual warriors, taking our first steps again and following you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, here we go. Looking at your text, let's look at it again. Romans 6, 12 through 14. Romans 6, 12 through 14. I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to point out certain words, okay, that you can underline or that you can bold or however you want to do it in your, your Bible, because I think this is going to be important for you, okay? So, let not sin therefore reign. You might want to underline that verse. Uh, let not uh, therefore sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present want to underline that word your members to sin those two words as instruments for unrighteousness but present underline it again there it is again yourselves to god underline those two words do this now because we're coming back as to those who've been brought from death to life and your members once again to god underline it as instruments for righteousness for sin will have no dominion under underline that word dominion over you since you're not under law but under grace look at these words reign dominion where you see them in the text it speaks of reign like there's a king there's a king there's a situation here dominion a master a control there's a master there's a control element in these verses okay because listen you're going to present yourself to one of these two masters 
to one of these two kings. You're going to present your life to one or the other. Make no mistake, you have a choice daily as to who's going to reign in your life and who's going to have control and who's going to have dominion. Here in the ESV, it says present. In other translation, it says offer. So here's what you've got. You've got sin over here, and you've got God over here. You've got using your body uh, for unrighteousness, or you've got using your body for righteousness. Listen, Paul is saying, this is what I want you to do. I want you to wake up every day. I want you to wake up every day, and I want you to offer yourself, present yourself to God, to God as instruments of righteousness. Do you know in order to do that, you have to die to self? Do you realize that? Because sometimes that fleshliness, we want over here. We, we want to get into some bad stuff. We have that war. You see, when we read this, when we read this, you know, it, it sounds like this should be easy. Paul's like, look, let not sin, therefore reign in your mortal bodies. No big deal. Just choose God every day, right? Just give your members, offer your members, offer your body for righteousness. Boom, there you go. Turn it over. It's so true. But there's discipline there. And to get there, you've got to die to yourself and you've got to make that decision daily. Because if you don't, you will begin to lose in spiritual warfare. Listen, for those of us who've lived long enough, we understand the frustration there is with a sin nature in making that decision and trying to follow God, don't we? So that's in Romans 6. Paul is so real, it's so gritty because in Romans 7, in Romans 7, he comes on and he talks about how hard this is and how much he hates this struggle, but we all got it. Romans 7, 15 through 25. Romans 7, 15 through 25. Listen at Paul here with this frustrating. I love it. There's a, there's a Bible app reading right now. That's awesome. <laughs> Romans 7, 15 through 25. For I do not understand my own actions. Now, watch this line here. This is Romans 7, 15 through 25. For I do not do what I want but I do the very thing that I hate. Oh, especially after I do it, right? I'm like, oh, I hate that. Why don't I do that? I don't understand this. Like, amen, right? Why not do that? Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it's no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Okay, there's something in me. There's something happening here. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability, at least within myself, to carry it out. In other words, you're not perfect. Oh, man. Mm. Listen, there are theories, there is theology out there that says we can attain perfect holiness in this life. And even if it was theoretically possibly true, if Paul and Peter couldn't get there, chances are I'm not and you're not either. But not the ability to carry it out, at least perfectly at all times and all places. But you'll find out later on that's not an excuse. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do not, but if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me. Oh, this is so good. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, oh, hear this, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. But I see in my members another law. And, and look at this wording here. Waging war. Waging war. There's a battle there. There's a battle there. Against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Oh no, I, I'm presenting myself in this moment. It's captivity to, to, be, to my members to be to unrighteousness. Wretched man that I am. Who would deliver me from this body of death? Don't raise your hands, because I'm sure it's none of you. But have you ever been in that state where you just go, I am wretched? I, I cannot believe I did that again. I cannot believe I still have this struggle. I cannot believe I'm still going through this. I am wretched. Who will save me from this body of death? And of course, in verse 25, it relieves the tension. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he goes on to say, so then I serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. In other words, there is a war going on there. There's a sin nature. There's an aspect in man that makes him rebellious against God. It's interesting because this kind of reminds me of a story you've probably heard it before where there was a, a young warrior 
who was becoming great in his tribe and he was struggling between good and evil and all of these things and he, he came up to this tribal chieftain and he started telling this chieftain about these dreams that he was having that uh, there was these two wolves showing up as a dream and they were fighting each other and neither, neither one of these wolves could get the advantage. And the chieftain thought about this and he said to the young warrior, listen, you're struggling in your life between being good or being evil. And in your dreams, in your dreams, these are rep- this, this struggle is represented by these wolves. And they're fighting each other. And it's tearing you apart. And so he looks at the chief. He's like, chief, what, what should I do? What should I do? How do I want to be good, chief. How do I handle this? And the chief looks at him and says, listen, feed the good wolf. Let the bad wolf starve. You feed the good wolf. You pay attention to the good wolf. You let the bad wolf starve. For us as Christians, every morning we make this daily decision to to die to ourselves. We pay attention to the good wolf. We pay attention to the Holy Spirit. We pay attention to the Word of God. We we die to ourselves daily and present ourselves as members. But so often, this is so tough, so often this is so tough, though. We don't do that. We don't do that. And we get into some real uh, struggles, some real situations. Strongholds get get developed in our lives. Um, We begin to lose in our spiritual battle. Now, I'm having a a sit-down here with you because I feel like at this moment, I don't necessarily want to be preacher thad or teacher thad i just want to kind of talk with you about some real stuff that goes on in our life just just for a few moments and then i'm going to start jumping back into some answers and things here but we need to talk about it what happens over time when we don't die to self when we don't make right decisions when we don't do the things that we should um let's start with the easier stuff here and you're gonna say what do you mean easier but easier to detect easier to ascertain talk about substance abuse or you know alcohol drugs whatever it is or or maybe even pornography something like that here's how it usually starts when you are not making right decisions okay and listen by the way i'm making no statement specifically about drinking alcohol okay all right i don't want to get into that conversation but just hear me when we talk about these phases okay and the dangers they are that are out there what can happen so we we choose not to follow christ and we begin to experiment with some things perhaps you know hey nothing big i'm just experimenting with it i heard about it go see if the grass is greener over the other side just a little bit so begin to experiment and then it's like you know what that was pretty fun it's a good feeling i like that made me feel good and then you begin to hang out with some folk that do that socially yeah it's no big deal just socially doing these things not a problem not a problem and then it goes down and all of a sudden it's not just social use every once in a while it's a daily preoccupation and you begin making excuses and you begin to do this stuff daily and then it comes to a point where you can't just live without it you actually do it to feel normal right right don't raise your hand if you've struggled with substance abuse if you've struggled with some of these things that you go to to achieve this feeling that stuff happens it's hard to overcome that and bottom line we have become dependent on whatever that thing is rather than god to fulfill us and it starts it starts with that daily step away from god and into sin it starts that way. That's a scary thought, isn't it? But guys, that's the easy stuff. That's the, e- that, that's the easy stuff, right? In the sense of we can understand what that is. But what about, what about this, though? What about other stuff that's just as dangerous? What about issues of codependency, behavioral issue, issues, harmful beliefs about yourself that have been ingrained in your soul? Those things are much harder to see. As a matter of fact, as I'm sitting here with you, and this is where I really want to just, I want to kind of give you some red flags, some warning signs, okay? I want to be careful here. 
Um, and I'm using a lot of terminology that comes from Living Free, one of our great groups that meet here. And if you find yourself in some of these categories or you, you, you hear of your, yourself in this so much, I mean, we're, we're all there to a degree. But the place where you can't move forward yourself, then you need to check out Living Free. But I'm going to give you some defense reactions when you've started to lose a spiritual warfare and you're in a bad place, right? And you need to start making the right decision and dying to self. You guys with me? Okay. When you begin to rationalize, justify, or use debate and intellectualism to justify or make that thing okay. Mm. When you're too smart for your own good, Humor, humor, brushing off sin, making light of a problem. I, you know, we all do that, right? Yeah. Well, it could be worse than, you know, so you kind of humor, kind of just brush it off, right? Oh, this is a good one, right? <clears throat> we blame others for our sin. Well, my coworker did this, my friend did this, my wife did this, my husband did this, and so I did this. Kind of a form of justifying, but the blame game is a good one, isn't it? You know what? I didn't get this. This person didn't do this, so I'm going to do. Watch out. Oh, goodness. These two last ones are the, maybe the worst. <clears throat> you begin to evade others. Those who you know and who know you and can look at you and know something's wrong you, be, you begin to stay away from them <laughs> also those same people usually are the persons that you come and you get in their contact and you get in there you know where you can see each other and those people like that are still walking in Jesus their holiness oh it makes you sick you feel so bad because you know you're wrong and you begin to evade them because you don't want to feel that way This one is, this last one's especially challenging. Smiling to hide where you are spiritually, physically. Everything's okay. <laughs> and also to hide the pain of the hurt that you have because you think no one else is like you or no one else is going through what you've gone through. And boy, we're going to talk about that in just a second when we get to the end. No one else has done what I've done. No one else has hurt like I've hurt. Just smile. Here's the danger in all these defenses, guys. Is this leads you to isolating away from other people. First Peter 5 8 says this: be sober-minded, be watchful. Think about this. Be careful. Watch yourself. Because your adversary, the devil, prowls around. Have you ever watched like the nature challenge or National Geographic, right? The lionesses, they get the the babies or they get the injured away from the herd and they attack that one and kill that one satan loves it when you isolate yourself because you become easier pickings make no mistake john 10 10 the thief satan comes only to steal and kill and destroy he wants to destroy you and for those of you out there who are believing a lie about yourself john 8 44 talks about satan being a murderer from the beginning but listen there's no truth in him for when he lies he speaks out of his own ca character for he's a liar and the father of lies satan will lie to you about who you are because that's going to keep you isolated from people who would tell you who you really are in jesus christ well let, let me let me just tell you there's no condemnation for you. You are free in Jesus Christ. If you've bowed the knee to him, if you've submitted to him, you're imperfect, but you are free. He paid for it. Eternity is your own. Don't let Satan lie to you. Now, if the fruit of your life aren't there over time, okay, we need to be watchful. We need to be concerned. We need to wrestle with this. But just because you mess up or just because you messed up in the past, don't let Satan lie to you.
Revelation 12.10 calls him an accuser of the brothers. Because of Christ, you are good. You are worthy of good things. And God loves you. God loves you. And let me tell you this, we have divine power because of him. 2 Corinthians 10.4, for the weapons of our warfare have divine power to destroy strongholds. These things that are challenging us in our life, guys, we can, we can overcome. And we're going to talk much more about this in two weeks. <laughs> but man, am I running out of time. But you need to see this. You need to see this. We'll move quick. You need to see this, okay? Thank you for sharing with me. That was good. That was good. Let's talk about the spiritual warfare, okay? Let's talk about what this means, this dying to self. And let me give you that word of encouragement again. I want to talk to you about encouragement, excuses, escape, and endurance. Encouragement, excuses, escape, and endurance. And it's all found in one verse, one of the first verses I memorized. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, okay, as we're getting started about this dying to self. Okay, here we go. Let me give you encouragement. Encouragement. Verse 13, first part. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. Encouragement. It's not something different. It's coming to man, and God is faithful. Encouragement. But don't quit. Keep fighting. No excuses either. Why? Because no temptation is overtaking you that's not common to man. God is faithful. Don't quit. Don't say that you can't. Don't say that it's over. You can. That's a great encouragement, but it also says no excuses. I'm not trying to minimize your hurt and your pain. It's real. But in Jesus Christ, you can overcome. And these things are common to man. And God is faithful about escape and giving endurance. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Oh my goodness. We need to be encouraged, not have excuses. Know that he provides escape and gives us endurance as we die to self daily. I have said this before. Listen, you need to have this mindset that every morning you're going to get up and you're going to die to yourself daily. You're going to choose God. You're going to choose to give your, your body over as instruments of righteousness and not over to unrighteousness. The eye must die. If you want to be obedient to Jesus, you must die. Check out this word here. Three letters. I beat you up with this, don't I? I keep coming back to this. But it's so good. If you want to follow Christ, if you want to make that decision, if you want to be obedient, you had better die to self. Because if you just wake up and it's up to you, I'm telling you, if he's not on the throne and you are, if you're taking your body off of that, 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 that um, altar, you are going to eventually slip over here. Because listen, <laughs> by not offering your bodies here for members of righteousness, you are automatically offering it as unrighteousness. There is no neutral gear. You hear me? No neutral gear. You're walking this way towards righteousness or this way towards unrighteousness. Whew. Who's setting a calendar like an alarm clock for devotions in the morning? <laughs> Guys, this is what it means to passionately follow Christ. Hmm. Let me drive home why this is so true okay oh my goodness you're in romans chapter six okay maybe you flipped over to eight romans chapter six i'm going to quickly read verses one through eleven quickly verse eleven is where i really want to be okay because remember we started in verse 12 don't present your members right don't let sin reign right how do we get there where, where's some of that divineness coming from so here we go i'll read quickly do you not know that all of us who've been baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Oh, newness of life. For we have been united with him in a death like his. We shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For the one who has died has been set free from sin. Boy, that's a good one. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Now, here's the hinge. Here's what prepares you for verses 12 through 14. 
So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Oh, it hearkens of Philippians 121 for to me to live as Christ. But listen, consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Then, verse 12, then let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. And we continue on, giving ourselves, dying to self, to God. The first step in spiritual warfare, the first step in spiritual warfare is being disciplined to be able to give yourself over to Christ, to have that mental paradigm, that mental shift, to die to self and to give yourself to him, to give yourself to him. And if you fail, if you fail all day long, claim Romans 8, 1 through 2, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. That is your mindset. That is your mindset. Let me give you one application, one application off that mindset. So you're dying, you're doing your daily devotional, you're, you're doing this every day. Listen, one thing that you can do, and we're going to talk about spiritual warfare more in two weeks, but one thing, that, one thing that you can do, right, is build into your life safeguards where you can run from sin. Be like Joseph, run from sin, okay? He ran from Potiphar's wife. He didn't want to stay in that temptation. You set roadblocks, safeguards in your life. Maybe you shouldn't be watching uh, you know, HBO or Skinamax or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. Maybe you should put some checks on your devices. I, I don't know what it means to you, but you need to figure that out. Maybe it's places you go and the people you, you're with. Listen, if there's toxic people in your life always cutting you down and belittling you, say goodbye. Say goodbye. Go hang out with someone who's going to tell you who you are in Christ Jesus and who's going to lift you up. Go hang out with those people. There's a lot of them in this church. A lot of them in this church. Man, it's so good to do that because next week, if that's what it means to passionately follow Christ together, next week David's going to cover what it passionately means to follow Christ together, being in groups. James 5, 16, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. If you want healed, man, talk about it with each other. Be there to each other. Encourage each other and be healed. Be healed. Listen, this second step is realizing that there's a war out there and we need to engage in it. We need to passionately follow Christ and we must understand that the eye must die. The eye must die. Man. One last thought and I've got to close up. There's a story about David Livingston. Went down to Africa, great missionary. But to get into Africa, to get into the heart, to get into the interior of Africa, he had to meet with this chief. And so the chief met him out there. And so uh, culture, the culture had it to where the, 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 the foreigner, the explorer, the missionary, in this case, David Livingstone, would meet the chief, right? Because he's seeking permission to, to move into this king's land, okay? And so they meet there. And the tradition is that the king will ask for one thing from whoever it is that seeks his permission in the land. And then he would give him one thing, Okay. So David Livingston has some stomach issues and he has a goat with him. He has a lot of other stuff, but he has a goat with him, all right? Because he's drinking goat's milk because he can't drink the water in Africa and he has some other digestive problems, okay? Um, so he's got this goat and he's sitting there thinking, oh man, don't pick the goat, don't pick the goat, don't pick the goat. Because he needs this goat. This goat is life. What do you think the king picked? The goat. But David knew for him to do what he needed to do. He needed to give that goat over, so he gave the goat over. And the king, in turn, gave him his walking stick. David's like, oh, you know, I can't believe, I, what? The walking stick. And so he's, he's walking over, he's all disheartened. He's like, I'm going to die out here. I can't believe this. And his interpreter comes over and says, oh, you're so fortunate. And Livingstone's like, what are you talking about so far? He took, he took my, my goat. He took my thing. He took that which, which, which I need, Right? And he gave me this walking stick. He's like, oh no. Oh no, Dr. Livingston. That's not a walking stick. That's a scepter. And wherever you go, the power of the king goes with you. Oh, I'm telling you, man, listen. That thing that's your challenge, that thing that's holding you back, every day give it to the king, the king, and he's going to give you some spiritual power through the word and through his presence, and everywhere you go, you're going to walk in authority and the power of the king. But you got to give up the goat. Are you ready to do that today? Are you ready to do that today? We're going to celebrate communion. Go ahead and take out your cups, and I'm going to pray for you. And we're going to kind of walk through this prayer time. As we celebrate communion, don't panic. 
It's hard for me to get it open too. I've been telling you about how awesome God is, okay? I'm going to tell you how great God is. We're packed in here, okay? There's not a lot of places to go pray. But Tammy's here, I'm here. We're going to stand over there by the American flag, okay? If you need prayer after communion during worship, you come see us over there, all right? And listen, listen, you keep packing this place out. If we have to walk out the stinking doors to pray with people, we'll do that. You keep packing this place out because people need to hear about Jesus and hear about what's going on in here. <laughs> That's right. We celebrate communion. The fact that Christ died for us so that we could die to ourselves and have freedom in following him. So as you take the bread, as you take the bread, this is the body that was beaten for you. Take it now in gratitude. God is so good. He died for us. Now we can die to ourselves and live in freedom. And as we prepare to take the cup, as we prepare to take the cup, we revel in Romans 8, 1 through 2. And there's no condemnation because of what this juice represents, the blood of Christ that purifies. You take this in gratitude. Father God, we pray with a heart of gratitude, Lord Jesus. You have saved us. You have died for us. There's no condemnation. And Lord, you give us an avenue to connect with you as we die to ourselves, God, as you've done something divine. And Father, we can live in freedom and live in you. And daily, we can have the discipline to choose, Father God, to follow you, to die to self, to follow you, and then set up those safeguards. God, help us this week to do it, to start every morning dying to self and bringing you glory. And Lord, if there's anyone here that has a goat, Father, if there's anyone here that has a goat, Lord, let them get help in prayer, whether it's Tammy, whether it's me, whether it's the elder, whether it's a friend. God, let them get some prayer, let them get some help. And God, if anybody doesn't know the king in the first place, let them come, let them come. Let's pray. And Father God, we give you the praise. Amen.